Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? It's a chilly uh, Friday afternoon. It's 5 11 p.m. here in California. And by the way, where did the summer go? It's just like when in a heartbeat, it, it, has, it has been fall today. Has it been? Whatever it is, I'm feeling really kind of chilly. Um, this place is more like the Washington State, uh, like Seattle up there. It's like cold nine out of 12 months for me anyway. It's chilly. It's not cold, but chilly. So I guess we are already entering the cool, cooler season. Um, so our retreat two weeks ago was just like at the end of the summer and it was the hottest days of the summer so we had the aircon like full blast for three full day three or four four days full on and then now we're reaping the rewards we got the electric bill today and then we just like seriously huh <laughs> so anyway um how are you today ladies um this is me again karina uh, talking to you all from her palace from the her celestial home so um and of course whenever i come back right there is always good news there is a uh a sure thing with carolina if you work with me you know you will see results very quickly it's just it's just the way it is so bethany this is for you honey thank you for your uh faith in me and congratulations on your engagement uh, it was a long time coming wasn't it so bethany is uh is a very sweet girl and she's pretty special for me because you know what bethany was referred by a fellow coach um who was not dealing with <laughs> um women below 40 or something so she was referred to me saying that the only person who could help you is Karina pang so here she is now to almost two years later almost two years later she's engaged she came to me you know with all these questions and confusion didn't know what to do with her so-called boyfriend at that time and they always had an argument they, they had a rocky relationship and i was pretty harsh with bethany i said you're the problem and i said it as it is but now she's a very happy girl so congratulations once again honey and i would love to come to your wedding you're right you said I was invited, right? But no pressure. Anyway, so um, today I would like to read an in, uh, an email that that a client sent me, which was which is very interesting and right up my alley when it comes to you know work, you know awakening, anything to do with the mind. That is my like specialty or expertise because um, I've lived it, I've experienced it, I've lived it. I only teach what I've lived. So I don't, uh, you know, teach stuff that I get from books and then sort of like talk to you, parroting what other people say. Uh, to be honest, when you parrot other people, what other people say, it doesn't come from your heart and it doesn't feel very authentic. It doesn't feel very convincing right so i only teach things that feel real to me feel authentic to me because i have lived it so this is also an example to you all to live your authentic life wherever you are in your journey you are right so don't beat yourself up you know whatever's happening is supposed to happen there is no could have would have or should have remember that because if you could have you would have the fact that you did not do it meaning there is no such thing as could have would have should have so just celebrate wherever you are in your journey surrender to it enjoy it be one with it and as i as i always say be curious instead of be appre apprehensive about anything about life in general and especially about of course about men right about relationships there's no, there no need for that. Apprehension, worry, anxiety, 
only is going to bring about the very thing you scared of. So just enjoy whatever uh, the universe throws at you. Turn lemon into lemon martini or margarita, or at least lemonade, right? So let me read this uh, email. This email is from Natalie. Natalie um, said, Hi, Kat. Thank you for the amazing work you do and the life-changing experience that you give, which allows others to undergo a phenomenal journey of personal growth and spiritual transformation. What you've dedicated your life to is truly incredible. And thank you, Natalie. Kat, I would really like to get your advice on this. I have always been a charmer for as long as I can remember. Very charismatic, vibrant, enthusiastic, very loud, and always appearing very confident. I knew how to woo my audience and was able to win the hearts over of men and women, younger people and older, children and elderly. I knew how to make people really like or love me. I now see this was a behavior my ego developed to give me what I wanted. I also have been described by friends and family as a very attractive woman. So if you can imagine, I got a lot of attention. My exes used to describe me as a source of light and another as a vibrant energy that made me extremely attractive and stand out from other women. I rarely was jealous of another woman. However, most of my teenage and early adulthood years were ridden with anxiety and mood swings. When I was high, I felt like I was on cloud nine. And when I was low, I felt like I was dying. I used to think of myself as most of the time an extremely happy person. But when I would ask my mom what her thoughts were, she would say that for most of my teenage and early adulthood years, I have been very unstable. And she would never know what new mood I would be on any given day. Life was challenging, but I just accepted that this was my personality. And, and then I met you. I did your programs. And boy, oh boy, did I get a wake up call. When I did your Journey Inward program, at first, I felt like my whole world came cra crashing down in all honesty. I felt like my whole identity as I knew it was a lie, an illusion. I couldn't believe that I was not my ego, that I'm really just the observer. Your program and this awareness has given me freedom. Never have I felt so free. But at the same time, I'm quite scared. Since completing your program, I'm struggling with my confidence with guys. I feel like I'm no longer as attractive to guys as I once was, or as attractive to others as I once was. I no longer have this great desire to please men to please everyone, to make everyone, to make everyone fall in love with me, with me as I once used to. It's really funny because I have a friend who is absolutely gorgeous and it's exactly what I used to be like, a charmer, people pleaser, extremely fl flirtatious, able to win any guy's heart over, able to win anyone's heart over for that matter. I was uh, extremely flirtatious, able to win any guy's heart over, or able to win anyone's heart over for that matter. But when I watch her, I think to myself, oh my God, I can't believe I used to be like that. How annoying I was. How much effort and energy I did put in just to make myself feel good about myself by trying to win over other people's admiration. Now I have no desire to even try anymore. But Kat, when I'm with her, all the guys flock to her and barely any guy asks me a question or even look my way. I'm really scared that I will no longer be desired or loved the way I am now as a passive, 
non-reactive observer. I feel like I lost my mojo, my humor, my passion, my life energy, and also feel like I lost the ability to experience extreme joy like I used to. I just feel very neutral all the time. I learned that being a neutral observer is actually quite a masculine quality, not a feminine one. How does being like that draw a masculine man? I can recognize myself when I'm sitting in the car driving and I'm watching my crazy monkey mind in a non-reactive way and I'm just watching, surrendering. I honestly feel like I'm sitting in a completely different person's shoes. Like I swap bodies and shoes with somebody else. I am happy, but I'm scared that I've lost the qualities that used to make me stand out from the rest. And that attracted so many men in the past. I love how I've changed, but my ego is scared that I will not be loved anymore by a man in this new me. I would love to hear your advice on this. Please help. Natalie, what a great and revealing experience you have just shared. And I'd like to gather my thoughts, you know, and probably one day turn it into a blog post. But I will try to answer it here, you know, as much as I can. Yeah, when you have come to the center to groundedness to steadiness. There is no more ups and downs of extreme emotions. There is, you, you're so right, there is no extreme happiness, there is no extreme joy. But the good news is that there is no extreme sorrow either because both always come together as a pair, right? Yin and Yang. Opposites always come together. So whenever you have extreme whatever, the other extreme has just arise, just waiting for the conditions to be fulfilled for it to, to manifest. So pat yourself in the back, honey. You will still attract people and men, only different kind this time. And femininity really isn't defined by emotionalism. It's not about that. It's by the receptivity and acceptance you have toward life. By stopping getting into the merry-go-round and emotional roller coaster. The more grounded you are, the more you'll be in touch with your femininity. So basically, being feminine is being out of your head, out, out your uh, mind level, and connect to your body and heart connect to your feelings, connect to being. That's the art of being that I'm teaching. Um, that also, that I focus very heavily on the retreat. And as you well know, I will be having a second retreat this New Year's Eve. So ladies, if you're interested in um, getting to know the things that I teach and I often talk about, come to the retreat so I can wine and dine you, and maybe serenade you too. Not by my voice, you're probably gonna have live music, right? So, without so many words, just come and experience it yourself. Now, I would like to also um, uh, share with you my, my awakening experience. It was um, it was 2014. Is it 14 or 15? I think it's 2014. So three years ago. This is the the F, the, F, the fact of uh, being awakened is you lose track of time because I don't no longer live in psychological time. So it doesn't matter to me. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day is the same, right? Like every day is. Uh, it's a Saturday for me or Sunday because I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to do anything in particular. I just have to yeah, be, exist, enjoy. That's all uh, the kind of life I have right now. And you can too if you practice what I, what I teach. So when I first got awakened, after a while, like a few weeks after my awakening, I got very dis. Uh, disoriented too, just like you, because the mind is back. 
at first, the first six weeks, the mind is like total, totally sh shut, like totally quiet. So it's shut up for about six weeks. For six weeks, I was in a sea of tranquility. Like there's, there was no mind at all. And it was so amazing. And it was very addictive. And then somehow the mind came back trying to m make sense of things. But now it kind of got very confused. So who, where am I now? The mind kind of say, so do I exist or I don't, e don't I exist? Who, where am I now? Am I the mind, the ego or what? So it's going back like in full force. And then you are like confused for a while. Like, does it mean I should be like this? I should be like that. Then you start thinking in terms of shoot again. You, you're supposed to be awakened. You're supposed to not have ego anymore. So you're not supposed to feel angry. You're not supposed to feel irritable, right? Or annoyed or bothered by other people's opinions of you. And then, but you still were, you still are. And then you were confused, like what's going on? Am I awakened or am I not? Seems like I'm going back to my shallow self here, <laughs> right? So anyway, so after a while, the mind will, would still churn and churn trying to, to find, uh, you know, the definite answer of, the, of this mystery that, the, that life is, that the universe is. And, you know, trying to sort of like get to know everything, like the origin of life, the origin of the universe. All of a sudden you got all these mighty grandiose like ideas you need to crack in your head, right? The ego is back in full force. So anyway, months later and years as you mature in your awakening, you just begin to see all this going on discussion in your head. That is what the mind is. So now it's back as an awakened or enlightened person. You know what I'm saying? The ego is slick. It will never go away. Your job is really just to be aware of it at all times. So, like, like you say, right now, all of a sudden, it seems like there are two people in you, right? One is the observer, a detached one, and the other is this uh, gregarious Natalie, who just like so loved and so adored by a lot of people because she just knows how to woo people. She has charisma. But now the observer says, that is just an ego. Let it go. You're not that. So it, there was kind of a, like a, a schizophrenia going on right now. Am I right? And that, that is quite normal. So, so don't be discouraged. And I will read your second email to me, which is also very interesting. Kat, I'm happy for you to share it as a blog with my name being made anonymous. Yeah, that's why you're Natalie now. Even better, you are welcome to share it as a video and discuss the topic, the topic further, as I truly believe this is an experience that a lot of your followers will be experiencing, the sense of a loss of identity and the birthing of a new one. And with loss comes grief and a lot of fear, but one can simply observe these feelings, of course, and then they too will pass. I have experienced a lot of grief, sorry, and fear, losing and deciding to let go of my old egoic identity. And my ego would retaliate, retaliate. It would go more crazy because ego doesn't want you to stop believing in it. What is interesting as well though, Kat, is that when on a date yesterday, and I just, I went on a date yesterday and I just, allowed myself to be how I was and how I felt I wanted it to be. I wanted to be. I went back to this beautiful, light and playful, charming self that I used to be. However, this time it was different. The reason was that I knew that I was more than my emotions and thoughts. Therefore, I no longer had this fear and attachment to the way that I was presenting myself. And there were times throughout the evening 
where past egoic fears would come up. In the past, I would lose control, get really scared, upset, angry, reactive, unconsciously, and do everything to protect my ego's false, ses, false, selves, false sense of identity. And last night, I just reacted, but not in such an extreme way. I was able to let go much, much faster and later was able to observe it with compassion and just laugh, being like, oh yes, that was the ego. I think that the more I practice with time, the more I will understand how to be in this new me. I'm starting to cultivate this compassion and love for my ego with my daily meditation practice, which is beautiful. So I'm finding that I'm not necessarily behaving in this neutral, detached, emotion, emotionless way. That I can choose to act however I want. The only difference is that now I know that this is my ego and not my true essence. So I don't have to fear attached to it and trying to do everything I can to keep it alive because I know it's not really me anyway. It's like there are two people in me now. A beautiful, compassionate, loving mother who just observes with love, forgiveness, and no judgment, or the observer. And then another unruly small child that can throw fits or tantrums, be extremely demanding, want things to go her way at all times, when and where and how she wants them, or the ego. Before, I felt like I was just the child without the mother. Now, I feel like I am the mother, but I can also be the child. However, even when I'm the child, the mother is always there in the background and can easily be reached whenever she is needed. That is very interesting and, 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 and beautiful. Congratulations for that, Natalie. So, here, uh, between what is the ego, right? So a lot of people use the word ego, but they don't really know what it means. The ego is any movement in the mind space um, that usually involves attachment, attachment and aversion. So when you are attached to a certain idea of yourself that you try to live up to, that's what the ego is, right? Or you're trying to run away from your perception of a situation or your anxiety about the future or your an antipathy about a certain outcome in the future, then the ego is um, at play as well. But even though you are awakened, you will still maintain you know, the large chunk of your personality. So if you start as a very bubbly personality, like, uh, like me, for example, you will still be bubbly, but the healthy version of, you know, bubbliness, you know, um, if you are a silly person who likes to joke, crack up, to crack jokes all the time, you still will be silly. Only now the difference is, you know, as you say, you let go quickly because you don't always go to the mind for answers on everything. A lot of times, you really just know that there is no answer to most things. Either Usually the answer we want is about right or wrong, right? Is it right or is it wrong? What is my opinion on this thing or that thing? As if, like, you know, it's so important for you to have an opinion about anything at all, right? That, that's what the ego does, and ego thinks that all the time. So the ego always involves the mind. So when you no longer so dependent on the mind, you become so natural. Whoever you are, you know, moment to moment, that is who you are. So in the moment you can be this passionate, gregarious, uh, you know, charming, charismatic Natalie, that is totally fine. Then, and it won't be your ego if it comes spontaneously. It doesn't come from the divided mind, split mind. Remember last week I talked about neurosis and the split mind. So if it doesn't come from the neurosis, 
It doesn't have, you don't carry any resistance in you. That is your actual self, honey. So there are three kinds of selves, right? If you are in journey inward, you will learn toward the end. Your false self, which is the ego, your actual self, which is your natural self moment to moment. So it can be your gregarious self in the moment or your quiet self in the moment. Or, uh, and the, the, the three one, the third one is your um, uh, real self or your true self, which is the witness, the observer, the detached observer, or the pure awareness itself that is not separated. That is your true identity, your true self. So now let's go back to the false self. You're talking about your gregarious self, the charmer. You think that's the ego. It's only an ego if you identify with it. You understand? If you think, oh, I should be that charmer all the time. No, sometimes you want to be a charmer. There is nothing wrong to be a charmer. You know, in life, to function in life, you have to know these things, right? How to influence people. As long as you, it comes from uh, the right place, then you're fine. It's only a problem when there is a, an underlying motive behind it, which is to like self-aggrandizement, to you know, because uh, of ambition of some kind. Because you you need to be this person, that person. That's what an ego is. That is the the false self. But if it comes from your natural state of being, what is natural state of being? You know, natural state of being is. A state of being before thoughts arise. I am in my natural state of being because I'm so relaxed. I don't try to be anybody. I'm just being me. All the time, I'm always me. You know, I don't try to like look a certain way. Yeah, I put on my makeup. You write about it. So, hey, I'm still a woman. I want to look good, right? <laughs> um, but... If you can connect to your heart, to the art of being, if you know to how just be moment to moment, that is your actualized self, your, your natural self. The self without the neurosis, that's what it is. That's your actual self, okay? And of course, behind the false and the actual self, there is your true self there. That is the witness. The witness observes the interaction between the false and the actual self. The witness doesn't take sight. The witness just take notes. The witness doesn't care about for or against, defending or condemning. The witness just equanimous. So when you have self-actualized and self-realized, you have arrived. You have arrived. There is no more worry in the world, no more suffering, no more sorrow. Yes, pain is inevitable, absolutely. But your attitude toward pain is so radically different this time around. You no longer look at it with trepidation, but you look at it as like, uh, as a reality, as a part of life, you no longer resist in you. Like whatever happens to you, you welcome it. Welcome trouble. Welcome pain, as if you had chosen it. Because you understand. Okay, and then the mind comes back. Only this time is so much more functional without the neurosis. The mind will become your absolute servant and you're no longer a pawn to your thoughts to your mind and thus your suffering you'll be above the thoughts you'll be above your mind then you'll be above your ego and suffering yeah the ego is still there don't get me wrong the purpose of inner work is not to lose the ego if you lose the ego completely you'll be vegetables and how can you earn a living being a vegetable you can't so yes, the ego needs to exist still, but the, act, the actual self, 
will be there more, most of the time to balance the act uh, of the false self, which is the ego, right? And the, the true self or the real self will always be there, like you say, as a mother to sort of supervise you, to see what's going on with you and to remind you from the background somewhere. This is to tell you that nothing really matters. Just let it go already. It's, it's amazing. It's almost like you, you have three different people in you, not just two, but in a healthy way, right? In a healthy way. In a schizophrenic sufferers, they also have a lot of these identities in themselves, but they don't know how to integrate them. You know, that, that is the difference. Schizophrenics don't understand what's going on. They think all these egos, all these personas that bubble up in their uh, field of awareness are separate entities from themselves. In fact, they don't recognize those voices as uh, the manifestations of their own thoughts or egos. They think those, those voices are real people separate for them from, from themselves. That is the difference. So someone who is awakened has that experience to be able to sort of like look at the voices inside themselves, but they know to, hand, to healthily integrate all these voices to make it functional, to make them work. And the result of awakening is not like suffering like schizophrenics do, but the result of seeing all these interactions within ourselves is we dissolve totally our sense of separation with the rest of the world, with the rest of humanity. And with, with the dissolution of separation between you and the rest of the world, suffering, suffering will also be dissolved. So if you still suffer because you still believe that you, your ego is separate from the rest, because you feel you are separate from the rest, you need to defend the integrity of the ego or the self. Because you are in always in a sta state of fighting, state of resistance. That is what suffering is. It has nothing to do with success, money, fame. It has everything to do with false understanding of the nature of the ego, of the nature of the mind. So once you overcome it, you can no longer suffer. You, that's, what, that's why it's called being awakened. You are being awakened in the dream, not from the dream, because you still live in the dreams. This thing that I have, it's a dream, you know, but I know I'm dreaming, so I will just enjoy it while it does. There is no worry in me. There is no trepidation. There is no anxiety. So I, deal with whatever arises when it arises. I don't anticipate, I don't start futuring and being anxious about the future, about worrying about a certain outcome. That is how I live my life. And because of that, I work so much, I produce so much, I accomplish so much without any trace of trauma without any trace of exhaustion in my consciousness. You know what? Because I don't live in psychological time. I die to the past. I empty the content of my consciousness moment to moment. And because of that, I'm always empty inside. And because you're empty inside, you perceive things as they are. It, you know, your agenda, your attachment, your desire, no longer colors things. So, you know, when you see birds fly, I just see birds fly. I don't add stories into the fact that birds fly. When I see uh, people laugh or talk or do whatever, I see them laugh and talk or do whatever without imbuing it with my own stories my own issues, which what stories are. So if you still have stories in you, you still have issues. That's, that's what it means. Okay, 
So if you have any question, ladies, you can put it in, a, in the comment section. This is a very fascinating subject, and you know why? Because this is the time when more and more people, people begin to awaken. Right now, it's probably about 5% of the world population is awakening, or if maybe less. When it hits 10%, we're going to bring our humanity into this new stream of consciousness. We're going to leave behind, you know, the postmodern culture that, we, you know, currently mainstream with all its excess and pathologies to come to a more expanded awareness in which we will we'll be more at peace with ourselves. And because we'll be, we are at peace with ourselves, we bring that peace to the world. We teach that peace to the world as I'm doing right now. And you're gonna bring more and more people into the stream. So you become, uh, in Buddhism, it's called the stream enter. You have entered the stream toward the expansion of consciousness. So you're no longer stuck in your egoic consciousness riddled with so much pain and suffering because simply because you are unconscious. That is what being unconscious really means. So if you want to know whether or not you're conscious, look at yourself. Do you still suffer? If yes, then you are still unconscious. But that is okay because your suffering will be your teacher. I suffered so much too before I came to this place. This place in my heart, I mean, not this place. I suffered so much, I hit rock bottom. I had to do something about it. And that is how I let go of the ego. That is how I understood how the ego made me suffer. So don't beat yourself up. Wherever you are in your journey, you are just right. You know, be excited that you are alive today. You know, this is a new era, a new beginning. You just need to bring more people into that 5%. So when we hit 10%, we're gonna turn things around. More inclusivity, more love, more compassion, more joy, more understanding. It's no more about condemning. No more about judging people who are different from us. And when we say people, you know, not necessarily people from far and away, but our neighbors or our family members. Right? When you begin to see yourself in everyone around you, you no longer suffer. You no longer fight. Because it's like fighting yourself. And all fighting basically is a fight with yourself. So that is, this is something you can, uh, you know, if you want to know if it's true or not, that's the, the great thing. The great thing about this is you can always look inside yourself. Just be silent. Look very closely. And when you look, the mind has to be silent. Because when the mind isn't silent, the mind will be in the way. Okay? So, but don't worry about trying to silence the mind either. Because that's not how it works. <laughs> Are you confused there? <laughs> you know, the mind will be silent when it's exhausted. When you have exhausted all avenues and you still don't find the answer, you will let go of the mind like naturally, by yourself. And you, the day you let go of the mind, the day you realize the mind cannot provide you with any solution to your life issues, is the day you are free. Because you just be an observer, you be silent, and not involved in any opinion about right or wrong, agreeing or disagreeing, defending or condemning. You'll be, most of the time, neutral. But of course, sometimes, you know, there is a time also for you to take action. There's a time for you to speak up, like I do, you know. So you just be yourself moment to moment. You know, you don't speak up because you want to be known as a, you know, whatever, a whistleblower. No, you speak up because it comes from the heart. It feels natural that you speak up to sort of like knock some sense into people's head. Then if it comes from the right place, you know, not 
not um, the place in which you know you want to advance your own personal agenda or to harm anybody, then you're you're good, right? The that place that comes from the heart is your actual self. That place that comes from personal agenda of wanting to be somebody, that is your false self. That is what the ego is. So Natalie, you still can embrace who you are on the earthly level. So you are the charismatic, you know, gregarious, passionate, you know, a smooth talker. Hey, that is a strength. Don't treat it as if it was a curse. It's not a curse. It's your strength. So utilize it for the good of all, for the good of, your, of yourself and of all mankind. So yeah, be you and, you know, enjoy yourself in the process while you are being yourself. How is that as an introduction for today, ladies? Now, I would like to respond to a few questions from you. Let's see. Uh, this is from Rakti. Rakti, I hope uh, I pronounce your name right. How to let him go and accept what is? I'm missing him so bad right now. Every day that passes gets harder and harder for me to let him go. You see, when you make it into a should that you have, to, you should let him go, then it becomes a problem. So right now, you're feeling so attached. Here's the paradox of what I teach, right? Even though I say let go, let go, let go, but if you think you are not in the right position right now, you're going to resist yourself more. So instead of worrying about letting go, maybe just savor the fact that you're missing him. Surrender to that missing him, to that yearning. Surrender. You know what it means to surrender? Meaning just, just, just relax into that yearning. But at the same time, when you relax, you don't discuss it in your head. When you discuss things in your head, oh, is this surrendering or is this letting go? And then you begin to worry in so much in your head about what is right, what is wrong. Then it only worsens the situation. It worsens your whatever uh, condition that you ha you're having right now. So you miss him. It's fine. Miss him. It's okay to miss somebody. Okay, so if you need to cry, then cry. But as I said, do it in a surrendered way. Do it in a um, total way, in a way. You know, when I was suffering so much after my um, split from my ex-husband, you know, I had to really go to the deep end of my suffering. I really do. So I let myself suffer, suffer so much until I can't anymore. And the good thing about it is it's like catharsis. When you suffer so much, you explore every avenue, every scenario in your head. Again, this is a kind of con contradiction, I know. That, you know, oh, in the end, the mind will be exhausted. The mind will be so tired. But I do it together with like guided meditation, sort of telling myself, um, you know, to be in the moment, so to calm down my thoughts. So between those two. So a lot of times when, I, when anxiety strikes really like strongly, I would just lie down, lie down, close my eyes. I listen to some uh, guided meditations. You could find it for free on YouTube. Just, you know, let this person sort of uh, talk to you, guiding you, you know, what to, or just, you know, instill the suggestions, right? That's what guided meditation is. So you just listen to it. And it does work because I can feel how calm I feel um, 
when I'm not in my in my head trying to understand things, trying to uh, reason, trying to justify things, right? So, and of course, when I get up of my meditations, that anxiety comes rushing back in. It's, it's, I, I know what it feels, I've been there. And in those moments, sometimes I need just to go to the deep end of my suffering. So I did, I just jumped in, I played out all the emotions, all the scenarios in my head, what my life would be without him and blah, 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 until I got so sick of it. I got so sick of it, so tired of it. Like this is so, I said to myself, this is so fucking ridiculous. You know, this is not funny anymore. So that is how I basically healed myself between those two, between those two kind of contradictory things, right? So, but don't be averse to suffering because your suffering is will be your uh, will be the gate toward freedom. If you never suffer, then you will never feel the need, you know, to be free, right? But because you suffer so bad, you know, you want to be free, and then you will be free. You will be free. Just follow me. Just. Just um, listen to me, to every class I have, you know. And of course, you know, I don't work for free. If you want to get my paid classes, that's more than welcome too. But for the most part, people who come to me and get the success, get the engagement, the marriages, the babies, they, most of them spend less than $100 on my stuff. So to me, the money is secondary. But the fact that I can help change people's lives brings tremendous joy to myself. So I'm happy. I'm happy just to be able to help you. Okay, and of course the money is good too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's see uh, another question. Uh, this is from uh, Mallory. How do you open up, how do you open up yourself Energetic, energetically to men. I feel close many times. Mallory, you feel close because you are not aware of your breathing. So next time when you are with men, try to sort of be aware of your breathing. Why do I say that? Because when you are aware of your breathing, uh, you're not thinking. You're not in your head. So didn't I tell in one of those, the previous classes that try to think when you're, when you're focusing on your breathing, see what happens, do it now. Okay, focus on your breathing, watch your breathing in and out. Now think at the same time, think of something. Can you do that? You see, mind and breathing Mind and awareness of the breath cannot happen at the same time. So this is the key of how to just be with man. You just need to surrender to your breathing. Be one with your breathing. Then your mind will be switched off. Then when you are switched off, you are not, you're no longer going to like strategize, scheme, uh, or you know, have these scenarios of how to in your head. And you will just relax, you surrender to being. That's how you do it. Okay, Mallory, try it next time. So, and anyone with the same problem of connecting with a guy, get out of your head and get into your body, get into your heart. Just be your natural self. And as I say, your natural self is your uh, actual self before thoughts arise. Okay. All right. So let's see other questions. How, this is from Maddie, how to deal with fears? 
confront them, feel them in the body, shift, uh, focus away from them. Yes, all of them. As I say, you know, whatever works for you, works for you in the moment. So I told you when I was anxious at what I did, it's a combination of a lot of things. Sometimes you need to quiet the mind. And when that fails, you do something else. When that fails, um, then you distract the mind. When that fails, you go something else, right? Or just be, as I said, or just surrender. Enjoy whatever it is that the discomfort you are experiencing. It's, isn't it crazy? You are told to, in, to enjoy whatever discomfort you are experiencing. Because in the act of surrendering, in the act of accepting what is, whatever that is, you're going to let go a lot of resistance that makes everything so much more complicated than it actually is. That is the brief history. So whenever you have fear, understand where, where do you think fear comes from? When you're in the moment, when you are in your natural self before thoughts arise, there is no such thing as fear. Fear is the act of the ego. Because the ego doesn't want to be in a certain place. The ego doesn't want a certain outcome. The ego is attached to a certain outcome. That is what fear is. Attachment to a certain outcome. So, what are you fearing? What outcome are you attaching to? Look into it. Just look in, into that thing in a detached fashion like okay i fear that i will never find my soulmate i will always be single for the rest of my life right that's what fear is fear is about always about the unknown you know so you you are averse to some unknown future you want guarantee that's pretty much what fear is. So the antidote to that is obviously to drop whatever it is that per per percolating in your head that's telling you if you're not having this in your life or in your future, you're going to suffer. That's what fear is. But right now, you are fine. There's nothing wrong in the universe right here right now at the second right you are you're healthy correct you're not dying or anything there is no fire right or anything that can harm you so technically you really are fine right here right now but the thought the head brings you to some unknown future which is an illusion because it hasn't happened yet and you don't even know if, if it will happen. So, ignorance, delusion, always come with these debilitating emotions like anxiety and fear. And the key is to really just understand the nature of the mind. The mind will always seek for problems. So when you understand it, you stop relying on the mind unless for something that is necessary. Like, I use my mind only when it's necessary. A lot of times, I don't think. So, my mood, my default mode, is always seren serenity and joy. Because I'm like freckles. Freckles is like me, like that. Because we are always in the moment. We don't, we don't live in psychological time. We don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow. So... We are always one with what is, whatever that is. So try that. Just be one with what is, whatever that is. And you'll be free. Even when the moment you're not feeling free, be one with that feeling of not being free. And when it's not being resisted, it will dissolve. Remember, what you resist persists. And what you embrace dissolves. So embrace whatever it is in the moment, however like, uncomfortable it might be. 
it's really not that bad. The thinking about it makes it so much worse than it actually is. Isn't it true? Okay, ladies. See what are the questions we have here. Still from Maddie, how to stop competing yourself or com competing or comparing yourself with others? Again, this is what the mind does. The mind always uh, seek for problems to solve. By comparing ourselves to other people, we, we will see problems. Oh, I need to be more like this, more like that, right? Then should start arising in our uh, mental space. And then neurosis, thanks to that, follow. That's what neuroses are. When you think I should be like this, should be like that, you know, and then you're not one with what is, then you become neurotic. So when you start comparing yourself with others, and by the way, it, it's very human for you to, to do that. I still do that too. But it's not me. You know what I'm saying? It's the mind. Because my mind, your mind, are one and the same. So there is no such thing as my mind, your mind. All minds are shallow like that. No exception. No exception. So my mind still compares the ego itself with other people, obviously. The only difference is you now there is this mother who is witnessing from, from the background, the witness, the observer, sort of like be there, sort of watching you. Look what you're doing, mind. Okay, good. Now play some, somewhere else. That is what usually happens. The mind starts comparing itself to other people. And then the mother, the witness, okay, now let it go. But, of course, you don't have to even say that. If you don't engage, whatever that is arises in your mind will dissipate by itself. It stays when you're resisting it. It stays when you're fighting it. So don't fight it. Whatever it is, just surrender to it. Accept it. Even what, when you think it's a negative thing, like jealousy, comparing yourself to other people, fear, anxiety, it only stays because you are resisting it. Understand? If you're not resisting it, there is no complication, then you move on to something else. The mind will move on to something else because it's not being resisted. So the mind is like this recalcitrant small child. The more you try to tell them, like, don't do that, don't do this, and the more it will rebel. So treat your mind like that. So you become the consciousness, or the, the mother of this child that witness the whole things and just be basically be the judge without taking sides. Yeah? The objective observer who basically doesn't tell you that you're wrong or right for, for doing that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, um, this is from Shelly. Have, I'm having trouble building a rotation, using online dating and going out in person, but not attracting anyone who wants to actually see you. This, this despite being calm, content, not pushy, etc. advice. Shelly, there's nothing wrong with you. Everyone goes through the same dry spell. You know, um, it's like the rain. Some days, like, you know, there is some weeks, months, there is no rain at all. And then when it comes, it rains for days. Same with men. You know, some days, some weeks, some months, there is no man inside. And all of a sudden, they all come out of the woodwork, woodwork all at the same time. So just stop thinking about it. Keep doing what you're doing, you know, putting yourself out there. You know, um, yeah, be on, on the dating sites. 
or go out, go out on meetup.com or go out on a sing, you know, to a sports bar by yourself or with your girlfriends. There, you know, don't get discouraged just because for a few weeks now, nobody, no guys asking you out. You know, I have so many clients who have this dry spell for so long and now where are they now? They are either married or in a relationship or, um, yeah, or either married or in a relation or engaged. So it doesn't take many. It only takes one one guy, right? It takes only takes one person. So don't don't get discouraged. It's getting chilly here. So just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Now this is from. From Sadika, uh, any idea on how to deal with feeling out of control? My house and job situation is unstable at the moment. Sadika, just be one with the unstableness, the instability. Be one with it. So if you are one with it, it's not going to cause so much complication. Complica complications only arise because you want to escape you because you're fighting it because you think if you only you fight then you will get to what you want it's so totally wrong the more you fight the more you suffer that's all what fighting <laughs> brings you for the most part really so if you just surrender to the fact that you know right now my jobs are like every now and then and i have to move from one friend's couch to the next welcome it as if you had chosen it and everything is temporary so you know you know i tell you i used to sleep in a shelter house when i first came to la <laughs> because nobody could take me i'm i was okay then you know to me it was just an adventure i didn't like go go to bed crying and all that you know no, I was just okay because I was happy. I was having my freedom to explore the world, to explore a new country. To me, it's a blessing, even though, you know, my living situation wasn't, uh, was kind of like uh, non-existent, right? But attitude is everything. So whatever you, you are at, wherever you are in your life right now, just embrace it enjoy it welcome it do not fight it do not try to escape do not resist that is really is is it is as simple as that it is as simple as that and because you're not worried you have tons of energy you can use to improve your life situation and you will you will okay see other questions this is from andrea how do you tell the difference between intuition and neurosis how neurosis always comes with resistance discomfort which is different to the discomfort of um of an intuition this is a very tricky question andrea you you're good you always put me in a mind like this with your questions. <laughs> so let let me think more uh, um, more deeply. So how do I know if something is an intuition or something is a neurosis? Now, because I've done my work, right? I've told you I've probably curtailed like ninety eight percent of my neurosis, pretty much. You can ask Joey, and Joey will tell you I don't have moods. So nothing bothers me anymore. So I'm close to have no, having no neurosis whatsoever. So when I feel something, I know right away it doesn't come from neurosis because I don't have shoots in my mind anymore. Well, sometimes, but not in a very sort of like, you know, complicated uh, sort of um, problematic way. Not problematic way. That's the word, problematic. So yeah, um, so when I feel something's not right, it 
comes straight from the gut, but that is why it's called gut feeling. It's gut feeling. I am a follower of my gut feelings. In what I do every day, I always follow my gut. I do things because I want it, because it feels right, it feels natural, it feels easy. I don't do things because I should, right? So that's why, you know, I'm always relaxed because I don't pressure myself to be a certain way. I just do what feels right moment to moment. And most of the time, you know, even when I have to do something because I don't resist, I just surrender to the moment it feels natural so you can use that as well as a as a tool whenever because i understand a lot of times you really have to do something right you have to get up in the morning you have to prepare breakfast for your kids you have to you know prepare them for school right and then you you gotta go to work drive in the traffic and all that you have to so there's no question about it but you can approach it from a place that you don't think about it. You just do it because it is a necessity. That is what necessary, right? So when there you, you resist nothing, you will know when you have done your inner work and when you have come to the place in which that you are just, uh, you are, you know you're in the right place. In your heart right your you know your heart is in the right place and you will trust yourself trust your own judgment trust your intuition so question is do you trust your own judgment I do so I might be wrong in my judgment of course but you know I will be always at peace with myself whatever whatever it is whatever the outcome is because you know I understand there is no other way it could have been because if it could have been it would have been so even if I might make a mistake in my judgment I surrender to it if I made a mistake mistake then I admit it and I correct it but I know most of the time I no longer have neurosis there is no fight in me there is no resistance in, in me about what I should be doing instead of what I'm doing okay Andrea so just maybe sign up for journey inward you will learn so much about yourself in that program in that program you know you can listen over and over and over for the rest of your life and you will learn still learn and you know what because you are being guided to tap into your own vast reservoir of inner knowing it's unlimited so wherever you are in your journey, you know, you're going to get something out of it. And the next time you revisit, you are no longer in the same place anymore. You are already on the next step of the journey and you will learn new things about yourself. So it is like a self refilled thera therapy sessions. I'm serious, you know, because it's not about textbook things. It's about looking very deep within yourself, within your own field of awareness. And you would learn so much in that because your, your awareness, my awareness and everyone's awareness meets. It becomes the collective consciousness. That is the divine intelligence. That is inherent between every one of us if you know how to tap to tap yourself into that dimension of reality, okay? And you can only know when you already diminish so much of your uh, thoughts, when you no longer rely on the mundane level of thoughts, you are on a different level different dimension of reality this is the gateless gate for you to tap into that universal mind to that divine intelligence that we all share we only have one universal mind 
wine, one consciousness. We are all it. I see you eat it. <laughs> all right, anyone? Um, any other question? Let's see. Let's see. Mm. This is from Connie. Hi, Connie. I just started a new job. So how can I be positive for when they add on taking two calls at once to relax? So I know I can handle, I can handle it. How can I be positive? What do you mean when they add on taking two calls at once to, to relax? So I know I can handle it. Positive thinking was jamming to my music today and made the work day go. Honey, <laughs> you're not making any sense. <laughs> so anyway, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, uh, so how can you relax if you have to take two calls at the same time, right? That's what you're saying. Um, hey, as I said, whatever it is that your situation of your life is, surrender to it. If you need to take two calls, focus on on the task at hand. Be one with it. That's what you need to do. Whatever you you do, if you just handle it in the moment, however hard it it might seem. It wouldn't be that hard if you bypass the mind. The mind is why things, everything, why everything seems to be much more complicated than it actually is. So just bypass the mind. And then a lot of times you don't need the mind to do your, your job. Okay. The, the mind sometimes is needed to solve problems. But for day-to-day -day tasks, for like, for example, you know, like washing the dishes or uh doing certain tasks a lot of tasks in fact you don't need the mind in fact the mind will be in the way of you actually experiencing things so totally and in the moment all right so any other questions ladies from luisa uh wow this is my first time witnessing the queen of goddesses Life. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Han. Every word is so impactful and just on point. Imagine watching her speak real life. That must feel very surreal. Oh, Luisa. Thank you, honey. That is very nice of you. Um, so you don't have any question. All right. So let's see. Yeah. Come to the re retreat, Luisa. I would love to have you. All right, let's see who else. This is from Araceli. Kat, why do they tam check? They, they're thinking of coming back. Um, maybe, you know, you don't know. And nobody knows what the future holds. So, you know, your, your job is really to care less. Your job is to deal with your own attachment. You know, it's not fun to be attached to a guy who does who who really could care less about you, is it? So, do not put yourself in that position with anyone ever again in your life. And that kind of attachment comes from uh, ignorance. I'm not saying you're an ignorant person, but ignorance meaning not knowing what you're doing, being unconscious. That's what what it is. So. Be easily turned off. This is what I always tell you guys. Instead of worrying about, you know, how to revenge, how to get closure and all that nonsense, just be easily turned off. You know the difference being with being turned off and getting all bent out of shape? When you're turned off, there is no uh, emotional roller coaster in you. Right? When you're turned off, it's not problematic when you turn off it's just a feeling of oh my god look at me this is <laughs> i'm sorry guys this is it's so complicated this course so 
<laughs> it's getting cold in here. So, all right. He, here, here you go. So cold, man. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, where were we? Being turned off. Oh la, oh la la. So when you're turned off, um, there is no emotional complication. There is no anger or anything like that. You just almost, not exactly disgust it, but close to it, like, <sighs> right? And then you just let go. When you're turned off, you don't want to deal with it. That is so much better than worrying in your head about, oh, I need, oh, see, you know, why is he like that? He needs to do this. He's supposed to do that. Nah, nah, nah. Offer analysis. This analysis paralyzes. This is what causes so much complication in your life, in your rom romantic life. So when a guy is wishy-washy, flaky, instead of getting all just so even more in love with, that, with him, be just unimpressed by it. And trust me, the minute you are unimpressed, wow, you will be so much more enticing to him. You will be so much more like, wow, magnetizing. That's the word, irresistible, because you're not easily impressed like that. But at the same time, you're not being a bitch about it. You're just not impressed because, you know, he's, he's been flaky and his effort uh, has been very minuscule, right? You know what I'm saying? So, but if you are, you know, if you're so attached to a guy, that is pretty much like being on a leash. Isn't it true? So, it, make it makes it so much harder for you to, um, to attract him back or to make him step up because your energy will be just so heavy. But the energy of caring less is very mesmerizing to a guy. Like, you know, this is what you, you are conveying when you could care less. Like, you are so in charge of your own emotional well-being that you'll be okay no matter what. That kind of energy is the winning energy, not just with men, but in every aspect of your life. The courage, the willingness to lose something that you, you really cherish, for example, that is what makes you an exceptional human being. Okay, instead of like being a one down, you know, a one down, yeah, someone who is more invested in a relationship. When you're so invested, like you lose touch with reality and you're so clouded, you cannot use your judgment any, anymore. That's why you need me. Because you're so involved uh, and you're, you're so closed off, you cannot see clearly. You're in the bind of these uh, emotions, right? So let go of this attachment. Whatever it is in life, either love, man, relationship, career, uh, family life, let go of attachment. Let go of everything. Let go of everything doesn't mean that you, you know, you're going to lose everything. It's not the same. Let go of everything is basically let go of the non-peace of mind. Let go of all this uh, yo-yoing, uh, the merry-go-round, the roller coaster of emotions. Aren't you tired already? Okay. So if he's supposed to come back in your life, he'll be back. And if he's not, that is great too, because a better man will find you. Have faith in it. He's not the last man on earth. Okay? All right, Araceli. Anything else? This is from Dolores. Dolores. My guy is very sweet and a lot of women kind of throw themselves at him. I find it very amusing 
that he responds to these women when I'm around and it makes me feel like he's trying to impress them. How am I supposed to express to him that it is not cool for him to do that? Without me sounding like a jealous drama queen, I'm actually very let back. Well, depends uh, to, the, to what degree he's trying to impress these women. If he's responding, he's being polite. What's wrong with that? I would have a problem with a guy who is rude to people or even to women, you know, who's showing interest. There's no need to be rude. He still goes home with you, right? So if you're so secure with yourself, the fact that a lot of women like him should, should make you happy, should make joyful. And you, you, you have a winner as, as your boyfriend. What's wrong with that? It's only your insecurity uh you know makes you think that that is not a good thing it is a good thing and i like my boyfriend being friendly with people even for flirtatious it's not a problem at all for me so whatever it is that stirs you you already have it inside of you now of course you can deal with it by telling him or other people not to do things that push your button that is one way of course but there is a very limited usefulness with approaching life that way because you will always have to control other people and a lot of times you cannot control other people so what are you going to do you can only control yourself are you going to always like throw a fit every time somebody somewhere you know doing something that you don't like and people will always do things that you don't like not because they hate you or try to malign you they're just living their lives so if you see yourself in other people the fact that people are selfish just like you are we are all selfish too we do things for our own benefits first and foremost correct so you no longer make issues out of this so what happened when you no longer take issues of everything that you perceive in the world and you you come at you know you come at peace of mind inner peace that is priceless so like nothing can bother you anymore because you see things as they are very clearly so try to come to that place instead of trying to fix people okay fix yourself first you cannot fix people you know from time to time you might succeed in getting the outcome you want from people but a lot of time that is not how you do it okay honey all right let's see up here who has the questions seems like there's no more question ladies so if you have no more questions and i will just end this session and thank you so much for being here as as always and uh, i'll see you again uh I'll see you again sometimes next week or anytime the, the mood strikes. Ladies, happy fall, by the way. Summer is over. Thank you very much for being here. Bye-bye.